Good evening, everyone. Today, our group will be hosting an event called a Malaysian EV Day. Our group member consists of Bong Ji Chang, me, Pierre Lo Fuk Choi, and Frederick Tay Tzu Yong. There are four factors concerning our event, and that is political, economic, society, and technology factors. Going green. Everybody now is using green products or going using electronic vehicle. So why should Malaysians use EV? Nowadays, EV are popping up everywhere, especially in the first world countries. So we cannot fall behind them. There are many benefits of EV as we will talk about in this event and why we must adopt EV as quickly as possible as to not only follow the global trend, but also to help the environment. The first factor is political. Why should our leaders consider EV? Well, there are several reasons why governments should consider promoting and encouraging the use of electronic vehicles. The first one is environmental benefits. One of the main reasons why governments should promote EV is that they produce zero emissions, which helps to improve air quality and mitigate climate change. In contrast, traditional gasoline-powered vehicles emit harmful pollutants into the air, which can harm human health and contribute to global warming. The second, energy security. Promoting the use of EV can also enhance energy security as EV can be powered by domestically powered renewable energy sources such as wind and solar power. This reduces the reliance on imported oil, which can be subject to supply disruptions and price fluctuations. In Malaysia, it's also quite lucky that we have our own oil supply, but it does not change the fact that our oil is running out. The third is economic benefit. The adoption of EV can also have positive economic impacts. EVs are more efficient than traditional vehicles, and their components require less maintenance, which can lead to lower operating costs for individuals and in businesses. Additionally, promoting the development and use of EV can create new jobs on the manufacturing and service sectors. <clears throat> and then the fourth one is technological innovation. Encouraging the adoption of EVs can also drive technological innovation in the automotive industry, as well as in related industries such as battery manufacturing and renewable energy production. This can lead to a new business opportunities and economic growth. The last one is public health. The use of EV can also have an import, important positive impact on public health as it reduces the emission of pollutants such as nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and particulate matter, which are known to cause respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. Overall, promoting the use of EV is a promising way for government to address multiple challenges, including environmental sustainability, energy security, economic growth, technological innovation, and public health. Next, we can look at the graph. The graph said that Norway is the highest country for EV sales. And all of these are mostly first world countries with no Malaysia inside. So that's why we should promote the use of EV in Malaysia. How Malaysia governments encourage EV? They have already given subsidy such as a 100% reduction in import duties for completely built up vehicles lasting up to December 2023 and has been implemented. The road tax for exemption is also implemented for all electronic vehicles. Next, we will look at the economic. Why EV is better for economic? First, it is low cost. No fuel required and the average charging cost is around 25 ringgit. People can charge at their own vehicle at home instead of charging station. And it has a better performance. Next, the time is crit right for electric cars. In fact, the time is critical. Colors gone. There are 6.6 .6 million EV sales in 2022 globally. Challenges. The first is high initial price. Most EV costs a hundred thousand ringgit or more. The second challenge is driving range anxiety. People are scared to drive long range as fear of battery might run out. The third 
underdeveloped charging technology. EV is still new to the market, thus the technology is still developing. Fourth, the lack of charging infrastructure. Malaysia still has not the proper charging infrastructure available, especially in rural areas. Ways to overcome the challenges. The first is the high initial price. Proton could release its own version of EV. The second way to overcome the challenge is provide, provide driver training guide on every EV purchase so that people won't be scared to drive long range. The third, government could start to invest in EV te charging technology to better the underdeveloped charging technology problem. And the last one is the government should subsidize petrol station to also include charging infrastructure to better the lack of charging infrastructure in our country. Thank you. Next, I will be pass on to Pierre to talk about the social problem. Hello, my name is Pierre Lo, and I'll be discussing point number three, society. So basically, it, it is how people view electric vehicle as the new source of transportation. Mostly people chose Electrical vehicle is because of how they benefit to the environment. As you can see from in the next slide, people build on electrical vehicle. Most people view electrical vehicle to be a uh, environmental friendly, uh, because of how they're reducing their carbon footprint and and gas emission. That would high would highly affect the environment. Electrical vehicle greatly reduces this this flow of oil engine cars. And, th and those are the reasons why a lot of people are now switching to electrical vehicles. As you can see, there are, th there are advantages to using an electrical vehicle. As, such as first, Electrical vehicles reduces carbon emission. As all we all know, carbon emission and carbon footprint highly affects our environment. Therefore, highly affecting our future generations well well being. Electrical vehicle helps with it, help solving this problem. It is because unlike oil engine, they use the electrical vehicle uses a rechargeable battery which causes no exhaust emission which results in decrease of carbon emission and carbon footprint in us the carbon emission and carbon footprint is a very high source of pollution because how of how many oil engine car they uses in the second advantage is electrical vehicles are efficient and require less maintenance. Electrical vehicle is a high performing quiet so you can say it's quiet car and it has it has smooth water that requires less maintenance. Unlike oil engine car, electrical vehicle does not have to switch parts every now and then. Or Oil engine car will always lead to oil change uh, and other car problems that cause Usher. internal combustion that will also affect the well being of the environment. As you can see here, because, because of the, how electrical motors respond swiftly and have good torque, driving can also be very enjoyable. Now I'm not saying that electrical vehicle has is perfect. There are disadvantages to using an electrical vehicle. As you can see here, the disadvantage of EVs is that they have long recharge time. Even though, even though we changing electrical vehicle oil car to electrical vehicle, there it still requires a long charging time. As you can see here, even rapid rapid charging station take thirty minutes for
for an 80% capacity. Drivers have to make a more thoughtful decision plans before heading to far places that doesn't have any charging station in between their destinations. Another disadvantage is that they are, they are quite expensive. EVs are te te typically more expensive up front, but over time you can save money owning one because they require less maintenance and they cost less charge than gasoline because they are rechargeable batteries. Additionally, their batteries, electrical vehicle batteries, for they even though they are more expensive than conventional cars, they have a warranty. They have warranties, unlike other car conventional cars. They have warranties up to eight to ten years, and they can they have a long lifespan. Um, greeting to my beloved lecture, Miss Rapta, and my fellow friends. I'm Frederick Day. And moving on, I'll be talking about the technology, which is how does the countries acquire materials for EV? But first, let us know about the material that used for EV. In the past, there might be many people will think that it's very hard to build an EV. Huh? Uh, like example, uh, maybe you need many materials, tools, and a high budget. But nowadays, the main materials for an EV is just the lithium ion batteries, which have high capacity and can fully recharge with minimal loss. And the main component for it were carbon, metal, oxide, and lithium. TIG 2022 also claimed that there are a wide range of lithium batteries on the market combine different metals and lithium, but they are all still lithium batteries. So it's actually not very hard to build an EV nowadays. We can imagine that an electric vehicle, let us imagine that it's just a remote control and you got the batteries. So put it in, boop, you are good to go. So as I said that it's not very hard to build an EV nowadays. And here's an example, a Malaysian EV innovation team led by Ahmad Zaki Yaakob. They convert a petrol gas car to an electric vehicle. It's amazing. <laughs> Which is, this is a, they name it as My Car 3.0. Oh. Some details of this car is, it has 220 km travel range on a full charge condition. And the conversion for this car from a petrol gas car to an electric vehicle is just as low as 20,000 Malaysia ringgit. Yeah, as we can see that all the gear knobs and the screen were all electrically made <laughs> and they got from a, a gas tank to a charging port. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not wrong, this one should be a car that made in Malaysia, which is the Peruda Axia, right? So guys, see that. From a petrol gas car convert to an electric vehicle. So nothing is impossible, right? So we should be proud of this team and be proud of having them in Malaysia. And so up next, surprisingly, China is the country that leads the market for EV supply chain. As we can see that from the statistic side, from 2014 to 2021, China mostly have half or more statistic cells than other countries, but other countries are also striving to protect their own supply chain. Robert 2022 also claimed that the domestic market in China alone generates enough demand to sustain exponential output growth. The country is constructing a vast network to publicly accessible charging station with a current count 1.15 million and growing to accommodate those vehicles. So, as a result of the ongoing development of technology, using electric vehicles to cover long distance is becoming increasingly practical. With Canada's extensive network of charging stations, many high-end electric vehicles like Tesla Model S can travel great distance with ease. These top-notch electric vehicles not only have the range but also save money on gas and support environmentally friendly transportation. The hefty cost of these automobiles, however, can be a barrier for most working 
class families. And we also have our targeted audience for this event, which is from 100%, we target 70% women, and 30% are women. It is because that we think mostly men will be more interested on a topic about cars than women. And also an example in a relationship, either couples or families, lah. who are the most that drive cars? Should be the boyfriends or the husbands, right? Which are the men? So as we need to success on our event, we need to catch the man's heart. Yeah. <laughs> So for the Q&A session, the first question, what are the methods to measure the success of our event? Hmm, I will use the advantage of the electric vehicle to measure the success of our event as it's a modern world nowadays. So we should also be updated, right? And also our mother earth was sick because of the carbon gas that comes up from the petrol gas car. So why not we go green and choose electric vehicles that are environmentally friendly to save and protect our earth. And the second question, what other relevant industry players that can join and support our event? Hmm. As I mentioned before, we can have Tesla to join and support our event as they also start the market here in KK around Colombang area. <laughs> Otherwise, we can also invite Audi and BMW to join us as they also produce electric vehicles. Then question number three, why should should the event be continuous and why? My answer is yes, in order to ensure a smooth transition towards a suitable transportation system. Basically, a continuous effort is necessary for electric vehicles in order to meet the growing demand that develop to, to develop infrastructure, provide government support, and incorporate technological advancements for electrical vehicles. So that's all from us. Thank you for your attention and start saving for an EV today. Have a good day. <laughs>